I am the event director for Penny Arcade. My daytime job is that of running PAX, a series of gaming conventions. And then, in addition to that, I am also Dinar Blitzen on Acquisitions Inc., the C team. I've always been super into tabletop games, board games, analog games. I was a big card game player. I've always loved card games. So I played Magic a lot. I played um, Versus System a lot, which was like a precursor to the World of Warcraft game, which then also, now I play Hearthstone all the time. I've always been, I played Pokemon for a minute, I played Yu-Gi-Oh for a minute, I've played collectible card games like crazy. That was always my big thing. But me and my friend group, we were all into Catan, Risk, we would play a lot of combat games, board games, stuff like that. RPGs, I had never played before C-Team. This was my first time doing it. Because of PAX, I knew about it already, and like my gaming background. It has been interesting to see. It had been like the RPG room was over there, and I knew it existed, and I would pop in, and I would watch it, but I would never participate. Now it's like I go in there, and I actually play now. Now I'm like, oh, I know, I know what I'm doing now. It's, it's like I, I've got my legs under me. Um, and um, it was great. It was great doing that before and leading up to the first Unplugged as well. Just so it's like I checked every single possible box now. There's no box unchecked for a tabletop board game show. Um, and that's been, that's been super helpful. This unique flavor of this show is not so much influenced by um, tabletop industry or the fact that it's a tabletop show, but really Philadelphia too. Like, like these shows take on a role based on where they are. They, they, they are all imbued with their own unique flavor and culture. Um, that, that differentiates them from the others in the portfolio based on the city. And there's definitely a lot of love and a lot of Philly vibe here. I am initially from Philly and I'm super glad that we were able to bring a show to the hometown. Um, in some ways it's very anti-Philadelphia because everyone's very nice and happy in the building. <laughs> I can say that, I can say that. Philadelphia has a, um, a good board game scene and it's a growing board game scene. And bringing the show here, like, got a ton of love from that. Like, like ton of love from a lot of the, the board game fans in this area that are like thank you thank you for doing this we don't have to go so far to get to other board game stuff like that's great uh the food the food is impacting things renting terminal market across the street doesn't hurt i remember when i was first hired um i they were like hey uh you got any questions for us when we were going through the interview i'm like yeah how'd i do they're like you did great uh worried you like games too much. And I'm like, ah, ha, ha. And they're like, no, seriously, you like games too much. And understand, when you do it all the time, you might not want to do it when you have time off. And it was true to an extent, but I still find a lot of time to play games. And it didn't it didn't really squash, squash the love. The problem is, I need to play everything now. I can't, like, hone in as much as I would love to. Like, I would love to put more time in Red Dead. But I have to play a little bit of everything, and I want to, because I want to be able to talk to everyone. So I gotta play at least a little root. I gotta play a little bit of everything, so that when I go talk to them, I can. I, I'm not. I'm not like lying. Like, oh, I love your game, having never played it. Like, no, I played it. I play. I have to play everything, so I know about everything, so I can speak to everyone. I couldn't Skyrim again. You know, I couldn't put 100 plus in a game. I don't know that I would ever, ever have time. I know. I gotta speed run games now. <laughs> so my daughter is four, so I'm starting to get into the fun little kids game. She loves shoots and ladders. She loves Candyland. We play those sorts of games. I actually started having her play chess, um, which has been great. She's picking it up quick, which I'm, I'm excited about. Ma, she's not competitive enough, which I, so like we'll play and she'll, I'll take one of her pieces and she's like, great job, dad. And I'm like, no, oh, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to turn you into a killer. No, you, you, you should want to crush me. Um, but I'm looking forward to this, this because I see it in other people who have the kids, and I mean, the industry reflects it great. And it's like family board game is a night is a thing for a reason right like it's i'm excited for this tradition to grow in our house um i'm really excited to do some D, &D with her i know that's like budding like doing doing special uh curated D, D events for like six year olds and stuff like i'm i think she'll really dig that and um you know it's a the best part about board games and the reason they're in a renaissance and the reason they're all these board game bars and all these things uh, popping up is because you can't ever replicate that. Like, people want that face-to-face. -face. We're in a digital, you know, exclusivity sort of space where it's like everything's online, and people are like, I want to go back to that at times, and that's why, that's why it won't ever go away. Jerry is a great storyteller. He wanted to be on the show because I had never played before, and I'm hilarious. So he's like, check both marks. But, like, 
I don't know, like there is a ton of stuff, it still happens, two years in, it still happens, where there is stuff that is cliche, like this has happened a couple times, where it's like a, a quest will happen, and the three of them know immediately. It's like, oh, this means this. We're going to have to do this thing. And I'm like, I don't know. And because I don't know, I actually go in a different direction sometimes where I'm like, oh, does that mean this? And they're like, no, it means this totally other thing. And, th and that's the thing. Like, they've done it so much. They, they know what to expect, and I don't. I was reticent to, like, find something to glom onto with the character. And he was like, well, you got a daughter. You talk about your daughter obsessively. I'm going to give you a daughter in the game. And, and plus, because of the way I built... Dinar, and he was so self-centered, but he was like pro-dragon, made it a baby dragonborn. Like, he knew immediately what to do, and I jumped on it, not knowing he was going to do it. It was very, very smart, and it was very helpful to me as a player. And it wasn't until we went, we had like halfway through the first season, we got to this situation where Cthris was acting totally in character, Chris was, and he was doing something that was going to get us all killed. He didn't want to leave this one room because he's obsessed with his god. So he was doing what his character would do, and it was putting us all in danger. And I'm like, logically, rationally, you should leave. And he is like, this is what Cthris would do. And he is like, sorry, guys, this is what Cthris would do. And it was crazy frustrating for me. But then I was like, OK, that was the big, you know, scales from the eyes sort of thing. Like, now I get it. Because before that, I was afraid to, I didn't want to mess anything up. It's like, oh, this would be neat. But I don't want to mess. I don't want to mess up what we got going. I don't want to jump in, and, and I don't want to like. I, this might bother everyone. I don't want to be selfish. I don't want to bother. I don't want to mess up the story. I don't want to do any of that stuff. So I was just kind of rolling with the flow until it was like, no, you have to do something. And it wasn't until after that point that I realized, like, oh, you're allowed to do stuff like that. You should do stuff like that. Like that's encouraged. And that's when I just was like, up, oh, acting unilaterally now all the time. A was a really fun moment. A we all got like a cool little character moment to shine. It was super cool, led to a lot of story stuff. The first time I did the acid barf, which was on the fly, I wasn't expecting, it's not like I came in like, oh, this is how he's gonna do acid breath. Like I was like, ah, at the table, that'd be funny if he puked like a cat. And it'd be funny if I did a wrestling promo. Now I'm stuck <laughs> with that, with that curse where I have to pull a wrestling promo out of my hat every single time. <laughs> and I'm also very lucky because I have a great DM and three friends, so it was very, you know, the on-ramp was a little easier. But I mean, I had friends who played tabletop games all the time before that, and I never really played because they didn't play D&D, &D, and I was afraid to play with strangers. I, I, the key is finding, like, a good group, because I needed my training wheels for at least the, the first six to eight episodes to, like, I needed people to throw things to me so I knew what to do. But then, like, once, once you get it under you, it's good. But it's all about who else is at the table.